interesting how difficult things are for yourself and, and keeping the morale at a good level um, with the way that the results have been running just now. Well, I, it's tough because you, you go and, I mean, look, particularly against the, the the Rangers, the Celtic, the Glasgow City results were, were, were difficult, particularly the Rangers one because it went into double figures. So we, we, we can't hide from that. Um, particularly difficult results uh, because of the, the size of them. So that, that hurts the players, it hurts us all. Um, and we want to do better. We want to show that we can do better. And then unfortunately when, and you know, Plenty of respect for the, the, the Hibs side, what they do there. They've got good players, but then you're losing five against Hibs and you're thinking, oh, we sh- should be doing better than that. Um, you know, we've had a tight game against Spartans that, again, another day we might have got something out of. Um, and then, ultimately, and, and no disrespect to, to Motherwell, um, but you're going into that hoping that you're going to be able to achieve something and, and you lose and you don't get on the score sheet again. Confidence takes a huge knock. You know, um, because it just feels like you're thinking, it doesn't matter what we do here, we're, we're just not getting anything. So um, it's hard to keep morale up because you sound like a broken record when you're trying to G up the players and you're trying to say, let's focus on the positives, let's focus on the good stuff that we did there. But that becomes harder and harder the more games that goes on with the more defeats that you're racking up and you're only scoring any goals. You know, It's understandable players feel deflated and... And you get to a stage where you almost you're just hoping that you'd, you'd be quite happy if the season ended now. You know, you you'd, you just want to get to the end of the season, get it over and done with, with as little bruising as possible, and and then regroup for next year. But so it's tough. But you need to try and go on because there's every week we've got a couple of games. We're playing Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday. So at least the games come around quick and fast and. You don't dwell on anything in training or anything like that too much. You're, you're focused on the next game. So that distracts you a wee bit. Is that part of the problem, you feel, with the difficulties we've had this season and that games are all crushed together at the end, that the games are just simply coming too quick and fast? Uh, I don't know, because, you know, ultimately players like to play games. You know, I mean, the players would rather play games than train. So... <laughs> Um, th- does that mean that you don't always get all the organisation that you would like? Ah, I mean, you try and get it across. And to be fair, a lot of this stuff, despite the score lines, a lot of this stuff we've been doing all right. We really have. But we're, we're getting away cheap goals a lot of the time. And that comes down to, you know, a momentary lapse, an individual momentary lapse that, fair credit to the opposition, they capitalise on it, but we're getting punished. We're getting punished um, for momentary lapses. And the, the players that we've got in the squad, we understand that where we are now and again, we're going to have momentary lapses because everybody does in football. And we just feel that every time we have one of those just now, we're, we're pretty much getting punished. So it's, it's I, I don't think the, the schedule of games is the problem. It's just that, you know, that confidence factor that, and as soon as a goal goes in, you can... You can sign, kind of see with the body language, you start feeling resigned to things, and you know, so it's tough. It really is tough, but no, I, th- I think the schedule is actually a probably a nice distraction for us just now that we can go like, let's just crack on with the next game. Let's just crack on with the next game. The season is what it is now, and um, we'll just try and move on to and focus on the next game as it comes along. So, although the results maybe ain't going to go our way, you know, it's it's at least nice just to have games to look forward to. Is it getting to the point where kind of you can't deal with anything that's happened in the past? You've just got to stay positive about things for the future and start building now for next season. Aye, aye, that, that, that's exactly what it is. It's like you know, daft as we are, you know, you go, you approach Sunday's game and go, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you get you get a bit delusional to be fair, um, you know, uh, but it's football, so you're always aspirational, you're always hoping that you know if you work hard and you get a wee break here or there that you never, you just never know what will happen in football. So that motivates you. Um, but as the season wears on, it becomes harder for that, that to motivate you. So you do just go, right, okay, how do we get ourselves through the rest of the season? And what is it that we're going to do to prepare ourselves for next season? So uh, you start having an eye on that as well, but, each new game brings a new opportunity. So you, 
you try and stay stay positive while being realistic, but also know that hey, you know what? Hopefully next season will be better. Last one from me is uh, really focusing on the game for the the weekend. Uh, how's how's the squad uh, facing up for the weekend? Um, well, we've lost Nick. Um, she's uh, she's injured. She uh, you know got a fairly bad injury against Motherwell, unfortunately, and so that probably rule her out the rest of the season, which is a, a huge blow for us. You know, captain and leader. So uh, we better shifting players a bit again. But you know, I think we're done. We're done. Sixteen. 16 fit players in the squad um, so that makes it that makes it incredibly tough when you're you know when you're competing against the likes of Glasgow City and you look at you know when they make substitutions and you look who they bring on like, I mean um, I think it was like last time that at, at home you know they're bringing on subs and they brought on Leanne Crichton and Leanne Ross um, <laughs> and you're thinking you know that's quality coming off the bench uh, but you go and you go and try and rise to the challenge best you can and, and see what you get out of it. But either the pack will need to be shuffled slightly because Nick's played every game since we started back after the turn of the year, so she'll be a huge blow for us. Kevin, uh, how how influential is Nicola Davidson going to be as a coach? Because we've got to remember she is your assistant, and yes, she'll be a missile on the park, but she'll be a motivator and influential off the park. I, I, hugely important, you know. She's a great voice to have about, you know, and and uh, you know can really she communicates well with the players, and and I think you know the players look up to her. I mean, she's been at the, the club twenty odd years, and she's uh, you know the young players that have come through or, or they've known is the club with with Nicola Davidson. So you know they, they really look up to her, and and even the more senior players that we've got in the playing side, they look up to her and respect her. So it's great to have her alongside us. And, you know, much as she's not going to be able to play, she'll be in, you know, she'll be in the dugout for us and, you know, cheering on the team, helping, providing a bit of advice, chatting with them before the game, chatting with them at half time, and, and trying to, to use her leadership for, for that area of the park as such. So um, it's, it's great that I've got her alongside us, but, you know, obviously, we'd prefer that she was out there on the field and and doing a bit out there. Is it is it fine margins at the moment? Do you feel on the park? Because I think you looked at it with Ben on Sunday after the game with, with Hibs. Our general play has been been good, but as you've alluded to in this press conference, there's a lot of mistakes defensively at the moment. Ah, you know, and, and look, a lot of the time it's it's no like necessarily even a huge mistake. You know, it's just. You haven't got your challenge in the right. Well, I say huge mistakes. If you're getting punished, you can say they're a huge mistake. But you know, you haven't quite tracked a runner quite in time, or you haven't quite got your challenge in on time, or you haven't got the, you only the right side of the player. And in the grand scheme of things, you could, are they huge mistakes or the minor mistakes with, with a huge impact? And you're just hoping that the players will learn for the opportunities, and that's what you're hoping for. Um, so if, if, if we can learn and improve on those, you tighten that up. But with the nature of fit boys, you manage to get something right and you end up making a wee mistake somewhere else. And like I say, just now, we seem to be getting punished like goals seem to be going in every time we, we, we make one of those mistakes or or we haven't they been quite as good as that we hope would be. So it's, uh, you know, I you could say fine margins, but, you know, when... I could argue, I could, I could say, well, it's fine margins when you look at the Spartans game and the Motherwell game because their one goal defeats every other game's been, you know, five and upwards. So is it really fine margins in those games? Because the, mm. the score would say otherwise. But the Spartans game, we lost 2-1. The Motherwell game, we lost 1-0. So I would argue those games, probably fine margins are, are the things that have maybe cost us not quite getting something. Uh, but... You know, to be fair, Spartans played well on the night and Motherwell played on well on the night, so credit to them as well. So it's you're all out there trying to get a result and sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't. 